What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We have a very exciting video in store for you guys today and that is because this video kicks off the next huge modification we have in store for our Bonanza F33A. This is equally big as an entire paint job on the plane. It is an entire panel. We have been hinting here and there that we wanted to do something with the panel. We are going with a full upgraded glass panel. You guys have already seen this plane come a long way. We did the paint, we did the interior, and as you know, you can't just leave a six pack in there. You gotta do the avionics next, right? So that's what we have in store for today. So I woke up bright and early from Phoenix, Arizona, caught a flight into San Francisco. Jeffrey picked me up. We are now at Palo Alto, where our buddy Owen is going to pick us up and head to Reno, Nevada. Look at this plane come over. I think it's a Baron or something. Whoa. Actually, that paint job is very similar to the plane we're being picked up in. Guys, we're being picked up in 04 Sierra. Long time no see on the channel. Owen is whipping that one over from Reed Hillview. So he's got like a whopping four and a half minute flight over to Palo Alto and then over to Reno. It's gonna be about an hour flight. So have no fears. We're not driving. We're not flying commercial. We're taking a Bonanza to go see our other Bonanza. So how exciting is that? and it'll be nice to be back in that plane because honestly, 6.2 Juliet Romeo's been getting all the love lately, so it'll be nice to be back in the old bird, the old turbo normalized bird as we head over the Sierra Nevadas. Um, we should get there in no time. Oh, here he is, speak of the devil. Oh my gosh, here it is, here it is. Oh, it's looking good. We need the tip tanks on 6.2 Juliet Romeo. What do you guys think? Even after the panel, we have numerous mods that can still be done. Here he is, okay, wave at him. Yeah! Wait, that's not Owen. That's not Owen. It's not are you kidding me? Literally in the exact same minute Owen was supposed to arrive, another tip tank bonanza comes ripping by. What the heck? Okay, well Owen's gonna be here any minute. Let's get inside, head over to Reno because the focus of today's video is being on the ground with Callum at Advanced Aviation talking all about our panel upgrade. Oh my gosh, there he is. This is him. Yeah, Owen! Heck yeah. Long time no see. I think we need tip tanks on the new plane. What do you guys think? Oh man, I love our paint job, but something about this one is just, this one hits good too. Yeah, it's just a classic style. Heck yeah. All right, he's not shutting off. We're turning and burning, baby. All right, update here from 12,000. Go ahead, 04 Sierra. 04 Sierra, contact Oakland Center, 127.9 or 5. All right, 2795, 04 Sierra, see you. ATC interrupting our vlog. North Alpine is 4104 Sierra, 115, working on the ATIS for Reno. November 1, 4104 4, Sierra, Oakland Center, Roger, Reno, altimeter 3302. Double two. They always still jumble the call sign. Yep, every time. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, we're, well, we were at 11,500 feet, but now it's showing 11,800 with that new altimeter reading. But there you have Thanks it. Look at that. North Beautiful North Lake Tahoe. Gorgeous. Christian's like, we're here already? Yeah, baby, at 196 knots. It doesn't take long to get up to our destination. So we are absolutely ripping. We got beautiful weather, not a bump in the sky. Look at that, we're passing over. Is this Squaw Valley? Yes, right down there. Oh, sweet, we've been there a couple years ago, so that's super cool. Is that Truckee Truck Airport? Yep. Wow, so cool. Never really been up here. One time, but we flew over that way, so it's the first time on the north side of the lake. So anyway, just want to give an update because these speeds are ridiculous. Over 200 knots now. We're nine minutes out from uh, Reno, so there are the bumps. There they come. <laughs> right down on 16 right, zero four zero. Should not call the base turn. Zero four zero. Okay, and just like that, welcome to Reno International Airport, where we just rolled up to Advanced Aviation. And is that our Bonanza? You see the roof I of it right so. there? 
Oh, this is so exciting. We are about to see for the first time our Bonanza completely ripped apart in a thousand pieces, <laughs> literally probably a thousand yeah. pieces. It's the perfect time to get an update because this is like at that point where everything's apart and it's about to all go back together. All right, here he is right here. The man, the myth, the legend, Callum. Nice to finally meet you. Thank you for arranging this and taking some time out of your busy schedule to give us an update. Long time, no see, actually it wasn't that long at all. We just <laughs> dropped it off. You work really quick. We like to have all the equipment here before so we can get a head start, have all the panel design done before the plane arrives. I, I do love your scheduling. Right when the plane got here, all the avionics showed up and it was like clockwork. Have you run into any problems so far pulling anything out? Not really as yet. Um, it's just kind of getting rid of, you know, 20, 30 year old wiring and everything like mm -hmm. that. But on the whole, the plane has been generally taken care of right. pretty nicely. Good. Okay. So we've got dyno engine monitoring equipment in there. That's all going quite nicely. We've so. never seen this before. Whoa. Okay. Uh, how do you keep all this straight? <laughs> Basically, we've got everything wired and, and uh, labeled when it's coming out. Uh -huh. um, so we're able to kind of keep a track of everything. But basically right. we're ripping out most of the wiring. Everything navigation wise is all yeah. getting ripped out. Even the interior, I take it you need to access a lot of stuff that's behind those side yeah. panels. Absolutely, side panels we take out for doing all new intercom and audio wiring to the rear headsets and the side. Uh, we've got new coax cabling going down to the back for GPS antennas, uh -huh. cool. ADS-B receivers. I already see them. Turn on GPS 2020, which is a WAS GPS receiver, and the RAM was for, the, uh, for one of the Avidines. Awesome. So they go right on top. Does anything go below? On the belly? Uh, we've got an ADSB receiver antenna, uh -huh. which is a small little stubby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure enough, that right there. And that is cool. going into, if you poke your head down the tail, you have your Avidine Skytrax 200 receiver, which is already mounted. Oh, yeah, the right there. Dual ADSB in traffic and weather. Oh, um, yeah. So, no matter if the plane has 1090 ADSB out, mm -hmm. uh, the Avidine system will pick that up as well as Ooh. from ground stations. Awesome. ADSB in and out. Yeah, Christian, you ever see a plane like that? <laughs> I thought that we had this thing torn apart when we took out the seats for the interior and some of these access panels painting and some of the hardware and stuff. Way more than an annual would ever be or when was the last annual on this plane? Recent enough, even though this would be a great time to do an annual because they don't just do avionics here. Guys, if you're in this area and you want any maintenance work done, avionics, storage, I mean, they really do it all one-stop shop. We can't say enough good things about this operation here. It has been so smooth. And I take it you also do like overhauls, something as big as replacing engines and uh, stuff. Yeah, this one, unfortunately, started to find the metal in the filter. Uh-oh. Uh, From our point of view, of course, this is like almost terrifying because we have never done anything of the sort. It must be daunting or now that it's the hundredth time you've done it it's just Not normal really anymore it's just another Wednesday you know clearly you need years and years and years of experience that's why you got to take these things the experts and bring it here if you guys want any avionics work done I'll link all their stuff down below of course it's super cool Christian remember um, we have friends other youtubers that have done panel upgrades and it, we, we were like inspired because they would show their update videos you know pictures of their panel just like this and now we're finally doing it. it it really is so cool that we are adding so many features to the plane and yet we are simplifying it, removing a vacuum system. Getting rid of a lot of old weight and junk that doesn't need to be there anymore. Yeah, because yeah. what we're replacing it with, uh, I think we should go show them. Do we wanna? We should go take a peek. You've heard a bunch of Avidine stuff, Dynon stuff. You're wondering what the heck are we doing here? Well, I think it's time we head into his office and go, uh, go see the equipment that just showed up. All right, into the office we go. Oh, oh, oh that Christmas. looks like a box of heaven. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Jeez, that's all for our plane? Yeah, you guys are getting the best of the best. Take it away, what do we have here? This is one of your favorite panel setups like oh, yeah, ever, is. right? I don't want to fly with anything else other than this kind of setup nowadays. Ooh. So on the Avidine side, you've got the Avidine audio panel, which is great, it's got auto squelch. You've got various features, including their replay button. So if you miss your clearance or something, you can just press that and I'll repeat it. And you've got various different modes. You've got the Bluetooth for the music, uh, different isolation modes. So if you get fed up with your passengers chat in the back, you can just block them out. They can Mute continue them. having their conversation whilst you can have your own. Nice. And then you've got the big daddy, the Avidant IFD 550. Oh my goodness. Which is the large screen version and you have... 3D synthetic vision. So wow. it has its own built in AHARs. Oh so if goodness. everything else goes to crap, mm -hmm. then you've always got your uh, backup 3D AHARs in the Avidine as well. And you're able to pull up everything from approach plates and charts and everything like that. Uh -huh. And you can have a nice 
3D synthetic vision of, you know, kind of following the plane. Especially when you're doing an approach and a published hold and things like that, uh -huh. it's so much easier to visualize it with the things that this thing can display. Awesome. And so, so plenty of people get away with just this. It's an incredible unit. You can rock that and have a major avionics upgrade in yep. your plane. But to make it even better, you can throw in the 440 and have yep. just a mm -hmm. wicked duo. Yep, you're getting the creme de la creme. And to make it even better, so since you've got the both of them, we're going to wire these both together. So if you're kind of touching a button up here in the 550 and you need to input some information like a direct to airport, oh, yeah. the, the keypad? whole bottom screen becomes a full screen touch keyboard. keyboard. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, saw, wow. I saw somebody talking about that on a, on a YouTube video and I'm like, how convenient is that? Uh, perfect. Both are touch screens? Both are touch screen and you've got the knobs and the buttons yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. The best so, of both. Yeah, so no matter if you're getting bounced around by turbulence, you've still got the knobs and buttons to go to. I love that. I love that because you hear some people who have full touch and uh, they complain about it sometimes in turbulence. Mm -hmm. It's just annoying to really hold on. So to have both, great. Do you have a remote to enter information or um, something? Yeah, we have a Bluetooth keyboard. Okay, yeah, so wonderful. That's a great little thing to Velcro to your yoke or something like that and you're able to do everything. Enter a flight plan, change your transponder, score uh -huh. code, uh, com frequencies and everything all via that little Bluetooth touch keyboard. This is now your transponder, the, the little Avidyne remote transponder, the AXP322. Wow. So no longer is there any dial or, or buttons that you have to nope. enter for the transponder, you simply you're the screen. You're all do it through the screen uh -huh. or the little keyboard. It contributes to the panel being so clean and minimalistic, which we love, which will show mock-ups here in just a second of that, uh, but the other goodies, Dion. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So oh, these are. Oh things. come on! Oh my goodness! You've got That's a lot of glass, me. and you're gonna get two of them. Oh. Yep, the cat is out of the bag, guys. Not only are we going with the beautiful Avidine setup on the radios and that stack. We are putting in the Dynon HDX 1100 10 inch display, yeah. and we're going with two of them. We figured now's the time. If everything's gonna be ripped out, go big or go home, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the, even though that doesn't sound a lot of difference between a seven inch and a 10 inch screen, it, it honestly makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. And kind of keeping with the, um, you know, Avidine's kind of thesis, um, as well as, you know, the full touch screen, you also have dedicated or uh, multifunction buttons Ooh. and knobs as well. Sweet. And the little shelf is super handy because you can rest your hand and uh, yeah. Oh yeah. As a little anchor point. Super easy. Yeah. So these are really hot commodity right now. I mean, all this stuff is any equipment and getting the work to put it in is really hard to come by right now. So huge shout out to Dynon and Avidine getting this here so quickly. So there's another one in there. Obviously, it's yep. the same. Uh, same thing. But we got uh, like ten other boxes. What's going on here? Uh, what else have we got? So we've got an Ahars unit. So this is your attitude reference and Jeez. you've got your pedo and static ports and the other one is for an angle of attack and all of these boxes and modules are super easy to uh, integrate because it uses Dynon's network. Just a simple plug. They so come in pre-made harnesses. You plug it in, plug it into the Skyview network oh and automatically recognizes it, does troubleshooting and everything like that. Perfect. And one thing I love about this setup, you'll notice when we show you the, the cutouts and what we're thinking, you'll be like, where's the engine monitor? Like, well, the beauty of these Dynon screens are, I didn't know this until he said it, it's a built-in engine monitor, like the whole yeah. bottom, yeah. Again, uh, yeah. across the bottom of the screen. Across the bottom of one screen, or you can have a half page screen on the other screen. Oh, I love that. So that saves us having to buy an engine monitor and it saves us more room on the panel. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, it saves some screen space. And uh, the good thing about the Dynon one is that we can, if we want, we can include other circuits in there. So I've had people in the past, uh, they want um, like a little enunciation to come up when they turn on like a nav light or a door is ajar or something uh -huh. like that. We can wire all that up so you can have custom Ooh. little alerts come up on the Dynon screen. Oh, that is so cool. We get all these great features and it comes in at a lot less than some other setups, shall we say. Like we are just for the money, you cannot beat this setup. Dynon also does experimental stuff, but all mm -hmm. this is certified. Yep, certified stuff. You're paying in experimental prices still. The only yeah. thing you've got to pay is for the STC. Yeah, honestly, guys when we were planning this panel originally we were gonna limit it to a few pieces just just go something like medium level upgrade right yeah and yeah. then when we saw the prices of like the dynon like you said experimental pricings on these screens it was like whoa this actually isn't that bad and well while yeah. we're in here, let's just send it. The plan was super nice. There were just a few needs and there were a lot of wants, but the wants were pretty easily justified by the price point and mm -hmm. now is the time. And for the content, for you guys, you know, we have a ton That's of fun right. posting these videos on YouTube and you guys are loving it so far. So it's like, 
why stop here? Why not do avionics? Why not let's do tip tanks? Let's do a turbo normalizer. I don't know, like it doesn't need to stop. Like we love creating all these videos. So you guys watching them is making us continue to mod the plane. So keep watching, liking, subscribing, and we'll have more mods to come. Owen, we're gonna wanna keep this plane forever now. 100%. <laughs> I mean, this is gonna make your life so oh. easy. Oh yeah, I mean, this is completely transforming this airplane and it'll help my workload and just make things safer all around. So I'm really excited for this to go in. I mean, now with only 50% of the workload, can we pay you 50% as much yeah, for being a JR Aviation one. pilot? <laughs> no, just kidding, a part owner in these planes. So uh, he's a critical part in making this all happen. You know all these systems inside and out. So once pickup day comes, you'll be able to explain everything to yeah, us. Absolutely, we'll and sit in the plane, we'll do some ground training for you know an hour or so kind of get up to speed on the basics and then we'll uh -huh. go flying. We can go flying for however long you want. You'll have me for the day. Cool. So we can do some full yeah. training. We can go and do some IFR stuff. We can oh, go and shoot a GPS yeah. approach. Yeah. You'll see everything working perfectly in the air. I feel like it's gonna be, especially for Owen, you seem to be able to hop into anything and really get a hold on it pretty quick. But with your instruction, I feel like it's gonna be a pretty easy learning curve from the past. Have you yeah. experienced I mean, that? <laughs> so I don't have an instrument rating yet, but I can make all this stuff work and say oh, awesome. and it's super duper easy you guys will see it in a few weeks the video on the channel when it goes live so don't miss it you're gonna want to subscribe so you don't miss any of that and all these beautiful things being installed Ooh, more boxes of goodies yeah so yeah we've got a little knob panel so this gives you quick access to your altitude bug uh, barrel pressure or a heading and track um oh, kind sweet. of a nifty little thing if you have a a waypoint or a um, direct entry airport entered into the avidine mm -hmm. since that's all synced across to the dyne on screens um, if you're too far away to get your ATIS or something like that, but mm -hmm. you've got your destination set, mm -hmm. you can simply just push and hold the little barrel knob and that will auto sync your no. barrel pressure to your destination airport. Whoa. And these things, these are the Dynon backup batteries for each of your HDX displays. And this provides you one hour of backup battery. Whoa, that's wow. huge. Okay, so in case yeah. of emergency, yeah. they don't so just shut a, off in your yeah. toast. Yeah. So you'll have an hour on one screen, and you'll have an hour on another screen, and your backup D10 as well, you'll have an hour on that. And then AR is built into... And AR is built into that. We're so, so much redundancy, redundancy and safety. Wow. So we're going from like, let's see, 20 different units to the new one that has seven, I think seven boxes and screens. It's going to be so much more of a cleaner panel design. Wow. So we're going from Sweet. that to this. Okay, here we go. Wow. Sneak peek of what the new panel is going to look like. So you just mocked all this up. Yeah, we'll... so this is a super quick and simple ah. um, thing that I can use to kind of visualize how it's all gonna lay out. And then I can use all this information and I can get it all into AutoCAD. And I can actually make the design of the panel that will be sent and cut out Whoa. of the aircraft grade aluminum. USB chargers, uh, charging outlets here, and we've got the little data loaders for the Dynon screens. So with those, you're able to load up sectional charts, approach plates, and airport maps and everything, Sweet. and display them all on the dyno screens. Beautiful. And then the ELT, we're probably going to upgrade the ELT at the same time mm -hmm. yeah, to uh, the, the newer one. What yeah, was that? Yeah, 406 megahertz version, um, So as well as giving out the you know normal mm -hmm. ELT signal. It's also impregnated with a GPS position ah, as well that comes with your avidines. And the other upgrade we're probably going to do at the same time is the uh, fuel fuel sender level units. Yeah, so we're gonna go with Zeiss senders. Um, with the old senders, you know, things wear out and the little rheostats and things inside them kind of, you know, give up and give you wonky readings and things. But these two Zeiss yeah. level senders, they'll outlast the plane. It'll tell you like 12 gallons in your right tank. 0.5. Yeah. To the tenth place. Okay, oh, that'll be a big relief because Owen, we've been in a fair share of planes that have terrible gauges, gas gauges. Yes. Either they go like this the whole flight and you have no idea what's in them, or they just the Cirrus. One of them doesn't even read correctly. Just that combined with our long legs, we will want to know exactly how much fuel's on board. So having that precise uh -huh. accuracy yeah. is super important. Plumbing that into the Dynon engine monitoring system, so we'll be able to display the fuel levels and everything and uh, the Dynon's onboard fuel computer as well, so you'll be able to do fuel calculations, uh, the amount that you're gonna use to your next waypoint or destination airport, oh so you know you're absolutely God. gonna arrive with reserves on board. I love that, worth every penny, especially if we had um, the tip tanks. We, As you guys know, we like going really long distances. Last year we did straight from Arizona to Montana. That was a huge leg. Obviously we didn't have those senders in the other Bonanza, so. We had plenty of fuel left over, but it would, would have been nice to know exactly how much we had left. A little oh test cutout that we've had done of our uh, 
Okay. Initial plan at the moment. Look how simple. Bye bye six pack. Hello, 10 inch screen. Second 10 inch screen. Avenine stack. Down on D10, which is in a box over there. Oh, yeah, and then one's the uh, autopilot. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. The S Tech, which yeah. we'll keep for now, and we'll, uh, that's able to be driven by the Avidines. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll be able to uh, spit that out for GPS and steering and everything like that. Yep. So and then once Dynan gets their approval for the F33 yep. uh, for their autopilot integrated with their screens, then we'll upgrade that at a later point. Absolutely. It's not approved and yet. At but. the moment, we're running the wiring already. As soon as that's uh, certified, then we don't have to rip the plane apart again. We've just yeah, got to get huge. into the areas where we've just got to put the servos. Easy, and pop it in. So these are your original EL panels, which is electroluminescent lighting. Hmm. Um, so these go down. Uh, this is your little switch panel with your uh, starter switch down there that goes on the left. And normally these are yeah. illuminated from behind, but it's kind of just the labeling that's illuminated. It's yeah. really kind of trick, but as you can see, these are kind of um, really? seen better days. Company and Van Eyes refurbishing these. They pretty much take it all down and uh, they redo all the labeling. Because we're putting so much uh, new avionics and stuff in this, oh, yeah. um, a lot of these are going to be you know, irrelevant labels. It's happening. This is real. It's happening. This is real. This was like a long time goal of ours. Always wanting to do this. All right. Check it out, guys. So we found a great example plane to go off of. A little less room in a Mooney, so a, a little bit tighter on the panel, whereas we have plenty of room, which is nice in the Bonanza. Isn't that sweet? I love the coloring, the lighting. Sweet. And here's just going to be even better because you're going to have the integrated engine monitoring and the Dynon screens. There's graphics on that Dynon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really, really impressive. What do you think going? Isn't that cool? Oh my goodness. I mean, it just transforms this old Mooney into something so modern. Yeah. Just like how our paint job took years off the plane's age, the avionics will also aid in making this plane look like a brand new Bonanza. Okay, so what do we got going on here? Okay, for a quick heads up, this is going to be the audio panel. Okay. And this will be the Avidyne IFD 550, which is going to be the large screen. Mm -hmm. And then the one right below it is going to be the IFD 440 PFD for the pilot's panel. Yeah. It's gonna be the HDX 1100. How do you keep all this straight? Every color, every wire? Yeah. How many times have you done this? How many times have you done this? Uh, this I mean, this is my 39th year, so. Okay, <laughs> all right. Then we are in good things. hands. Yeah. Does certain colors mean certain things, right? Is, isn't that? Yeah, with with the, the Dynon system, that is, they use a color code system, which it makes it a little bit easier to you know, differentiate what's what. So one of our viewers, Frank, just showed up. Nice to uh, finally meet you. You've, you've been following Owen and I for Oh, at least a thousand years. <laughs> what do you think of the plane? Is the it, paint as good in person as it is in the videos? It is absolutely fabulous, and I don't think it could have done it any better. Bam! Okay, you heard it first from a unbiased source, real in the flesh, not behind a screen. In person, it looks even better than it looks on video. All right, we made it back into 04 Sierra, about to hit the skies to Portland, Oregon, where we are picking up a new car coming soon to Jarrah Garage, so stay tuned for that. But uh, guys, final thoughts on the panel update? I think this back-to-back -back visual, jumping into this plane and having the mock-up in ours, oh my gosh, this is going to be a huge difference. Owen, you ready for this? This is yeah. your first panel upgrade oh. like this ever. I mean, just from a pilot's perspective, having that situational awareness with the synthetic vision, all the charts right there, anything to just decrease my workload is advantageous to me, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm looking forward to having Callum go up and fly with me and show me all the nitty-gritty details yeah. that this these instruments are capable of oh, yeah. Um, yeah. and because I just I really want to use it to the full potential remember Christian you didn't know about this Owen and I were on like a one-hour phone call with Callum and he's like hey guys by the way if you want to do like full glass 10 inch displays like we could yeah and then basically by the end of the phone call they were, we were on sold order. <laughs> and then Christian we told Christian you're like wait what the heck that was not the plan like what <laughs> you had no yeah. idea yeah, exactly. So what a surprise. Yeah, I think it's a perfect balance. This is just right. The only thing that's going to come in addition is that autopilot that we mentioned that Dynan is still seeking um, certification for the F-33 Bonanza. But once that comes, that will be updated and then that, that's the last piece of the puzzle. But obviously that's just a small thing. The rest will be completely dialed in. And he's already planning ahead. He said he'll run extra wiring out to the tip tanks in case yeah. we ever want to do that the fuel senders and all that. So he's thinking ahead, you know, planning ahead. He's, he's so good with that. His, the way his mind works with this avionics stuff can't be matched. It has been a class act here at Advanced Aviation in Reno. If you guys are in the area, even if you're not in the area, whatever, fly to them because they'll get your plane done quickly for less money. There's no tax. They're right here on an international airport. So you can just drop your plane and, you know, fly on home. It's crazy to think that uh, we'll be coming back in just over a month to pick up our new plane. I was going to say coming back more often than that, given we just enjoyed a great 
great lunch and we <laughs> had good conversation about some other planes that we may or may not have had our eye on. This is the first of many. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The third major, major update on the we keep saying banana bonanza, but it's no, it's no longer, longer a banana bonanza. So we gotta come up with a new name, guys. Comment new yes. names for 62 Julia Romeo down below. I think very soon this plane will be worthy of some show, maybe nearby you. We would love to take this plane all around the country. And until then, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. See ya. I can never ever find the right words. And there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you the right girl. It feels right.